Welcome to the MarkLogic Security video series from MarkLogic University. This video is the first part in a series of topics covering important concepts to master when implementing a security model in MarkLogic. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the security database. In this tutorial, you will learn how to initialize the first host in a cluster and describe the security database and what it contains. You'll also be able to describe high availability and how it relates to the security database. To follow along with this tutorial, you'll need to download and install MarkLogic. And as we progress throughout this tutorial, we'll refer to various pieces of code and samples of data. These examples are available through the MarkLogic University GitHub site. The first thing to understand when examining the MarkLogic security model is the security database. Let's start at the beginning. When building your MarkLogic cluster, you will first start by installing MarkLogic on a host in that cluster. And remember that a host or a node is just a machine that you're running MarkLogic on. The second step is that you will start the MarkLogic service on that host. And then the third step is to initialize that host. When you initialize the first host in a cluster, several default databases will get created, including the security database. And as part of the initialization, you will have to create a MarkLogic admin user. This creates a user document inside the security database and assigns that user the admin role. Let's see it in action. In this demo, we're going to initialize the first host in a cluster and create the admin user, and then take a look at the security database that results. For this demo, MarkLogic has already been installed and the service has been started. If you need more information on how to complete those steps at home, please see the installation guide. So let's get started by initializing this host by opening up a browser and going to localhost port 8001. Now we go to localhost port 8001, and this is the admin interface in MarkLogic. And on a newly installed host, in the first host in a particular cluster, MarkLogic is going to have to initialize and create those default databases. So it will prompt us to do this initialization. So let's go ahead and click OK. And we see here that MarkLogic is going to go through these initialization steps and it's see that it's going to ask if we wish to join a cluster. Since we are installing MarkLogic on the first host in a cluster, there are no other hosts that we would want to link up with. So in this scenario, we're going to choose Skip. And the next thing that we see is that we haven't locked down our administrator account yet for this host and for this cluster. So it's going to require that we create our admin user. So to keep things simple for this tutorial, we're going to create an admin user with a username of admin and a password of admin. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And at this point in time, we must then authenticate to perform any action inside of MarkLogic because we have now locked down our environment with an admin user. So we'll authenticate with that newly created admin user. And we now have access to the administration interface where we can manage this cluster and this host. So as part of this initialization, the security database was created. So now we can actually take a look at what that database looks like and what it contains. Let's open up a new browser tab and go out to Query Console on port 8000. We'll have to authenticate using our newly created admin user. And what we'll see are all of these default databases that were created by the initialization. The documents database, the modules database, the schemas and triggers databases, and we also see the security database here. And if we select that security database and click the explore button, we'll be able to see what those contents are inside of that database because we are logged into Query Console as a MarkLogic admin. And if we look inside of the security database, what we're going to find 
are roles, users, privileges, and amps. Now we'll discuss all of these as we progress throughout this series. Now after you've initialized the first host in the cluster, you could then add more hosts to your cluster. The new hosts that you add to the cluster won't need to have the security database created on them. This is because all hosts in a cluster can communicate with each other and therefore use the same security database. This means the same security database can be shared across multiple projects, enabling you to have users across multiple projects and develop models that may even share roles across those projects. It also means that for an application running on a cluster to be available, that application must have access to the host that contains the security database. You must be able to authenticate in order to do anything inside of Mark Logic. So in this scenario, if we were to lose host 1, which contains our security database, our cluster would be down because that security database has not been replicated on any of the other hosts in this cluster. MarkLogic enables you to configure a cluster for high availability. In that scenario, what you would like to do is set up replicas of that security database on other hosts in the cluster. Now failover in MarkLogic allows for this automatically to take over should you lose the host that is managing the primary security database and its forests. For more on high availability, check out these additional resources. So let's review the key takeaways from this episode. The security database gets created when you initialize the first host in a cluster. The security database contains documents, and those documents define roles, users, privileges, and amps. The security database is shared across projects running on that cluster. Therefore, you need to configure the security database for automatic failover to enable high availability of your cluster. In this tutorial, we discussed initializing the first host in the cluster. We looked at what the security database is and what it contains. And we talked about how the security database impacts high availability of a cluster. So take the next step. Get started by downloading MarkLogic from developer.marklogic.com. You can access any code samples in this episode through the MarkLogic University GitHub site. And if you need additional training, make sure to go check out marklogic.com training, where you can view all of our various free training options. To watch additional on-demand tutorials, you can do so through the marklogic.com on-demand website or download the MarkLogic University mobile app. And as you build up your technical skills related to MarkLogic, don't forget to show the world what you've learned. Add MarkLogic as a skill on your LinkedIn profile today. Thank you for watching this MarkLogic University On Demand tutorial.